Hi guys, welcome back to Outdoor Adventure Craft. Today I'd like to take a couple minutes and do a short tutorial for you guys on the fir tree and how you can use the pitch from the fir tree to help you start fires. So I brought my uh, Trees in Canada tree identification book here. First step is going to be identifying the fir tree so that we can use it, so that we can get that pitch from it to help us in starting fires when we need it most. So let's take a look here. Okay, so here you go guys. If we go to this page here, 84, in the Trees in Canada book, we see a tree called the balsam fir. And we see its coverage range there over the northeastern part of United States and the easternmost part of Canada. Just below it you see the needle pattern there. Uh, they're mostly to the left and to the right of the branch, not all the way around the uh, circumference. And you see the needle shown as times two. So it's approximately about a, a one inch needle. And it's round on the end and flat. Now notice this picture of the bark. You see these bumps or little blisters showing on the, the bark of the young tree. That's what we're going to be looking for. So let's go look at the tree itself and see if we can't find these similarities. Okay guys, so here I have a, a small shoot uh, off of a young fir tree here and you can see the uh, the needles. They're approximately uh, one inch long, they're round on the end so there's no point to them or sharpness and they're flat when you feel them instead of round. You'll also notice that primarily they shoot off in two directions as opposed to coming out in all directions. Again, the length of about one inch going in two directions as opposed to all directions with this particular fur and uh, not pointy on the end but rounded and quite soft. Let's look at the bark now of the tree. So here's a young one guys. I figured I'd show you a, a smaller one first and then a bigger one. This one wouldn't exactly be young young but it's probably only about six inches thick or so and there's a there's a nine inch one over there I want to show you. But uh, one of the things I noticed when I was uh, looking to identify this, you see these uh, these lines. You see it in the picture in the book there too earlier in the video. But they almost create uh, a ribbon effect all the way around the tree. You also notice the grayness as well as here you see uh, one of these blisters that we're talking about where the resin is in. Uh, some smaller ones here raised up. The uh, more mature trees sometimes you find more on and uh, let's go look at one of those now. So here's a more mature one guys. It probably has a circumference of uh, 9 or 10 inches. Um, when I was looking through the book, I didn't mention it earlier, but I did. I showed you guys the page on the balsam fir. Um, this is what I suspect it is. It does look a bit like uh, the lowlands fir as well that you see in the book, but the, the distribution uh, doesn't show that the lowland fir is, is common here. But we are near uh, a forestry complex uh, school where they do research and stuff like that, so they may have planted uh, some different species in the area to see how well they perform. But again, here's a more mature one, and you notice the, the prevalence of these, these blisters. If you touch them, they're soft, and you can, you can almost feel the pressure uh, behind them. They want to push back against you. Uh, they're, they're all over the tree, everywhere as you look. And this is really what we're looking for. Hidden inside these little blisters is the pitch. And you're going to be excited to see uh, just how much... Uh, that can do for you starting a fire in a tough situation. So let's get to uh, making the tool we're going to use to harvest this pitch. Guys, just before I go and uh, make the tool to harvest the pitch, I want to show you some contrast. Uh, I'm going to talk about the spruce tree and its uses in another video down the road sometime. But uh, notice how the spruce has the needles going all the way around. If you look, they go all the way around the stem shorter, pointier, and notice the contrast uh, in the bark here. Notice how rough the bark is. So just a contrast there, you can see uh, a big difference between the two if you uh, 
see that roughness, the lack of the blisters, the, the reddish brown color as opposed to that, that light gray and the, uh, the round needles on the spruce going all the way around as opposed to flat like on the fur we looked at. Let's get to that tool. So here's what we're going to use to uh, harvest the pitch from the fir tree. Uh, I found a dead fir that's standing here, a juvenile one that never never come along too far. And uh, we're going to use a saw, whether you have a folder, or an extender, or a, a buck saw, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to cut a section out of it about, uh, about 8 inches long or so. So I'll get started on that and we'll get back to you in a sec. There you go. I'm just going to knock the uh, branches and stuff off it. I'll clean it up a little bit better with my knife and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay guys, so I, I've got my piece of, uh, of wood here. Now, uh, after practicing a couple times, uh, one of the things I notice is if you have any kind of an angle on the end of your cut, when you start doing what I'm about to show you, uh, put the the closer in angle on the bottom because what we're going to do uh, is going to help you seeing uh, as you do your work. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by removing some of the material from the end. Just kind of cut in at a sharp angle first, a steep angle, then roll away as you push through and you're creating a bit of a a plateau there. You can see it rounding out with that slope going down there. It doesn't have to be exact. It really doesn't. You're just creating a flat little surface. And if you can get a bit of a, a depression right there, you're going to be able to pull the resin in it. There. Now, one of the things I started doing too was notching this out right between about here and here, creating a little depression just by pushing my knife in with the blade pointed outwards to get one side of it and switch hands and push from the other way to get the other side of it. and you almost get a bit of a, a bowl in there if you can see it. Always cut away from yourself no matter what you're doing. Not towards yourself. All right, so we've got a nice shape here and we've got a nice bowl or bevel right here. Let's go put it to use on those blisters. All right guys, here's where all the magic happens. So I come back over to that uh, mature tree we were looking at earlier and you can see there's uh, there's blisters all over it. You can push them and you feel they're, they're quite, quite soft. Now what you're doing with your little tool is you're placing this little catchment area right here against the, uh, the bottom part of the blister. So maybe you want to be, uh, let's say, about a third of the way up because what you're going to do is you're going to place that against the blister. You can see me placing it in there and you want to uh, you want to squeeze against the blister so that it pushes the pressure towards the top and then pops it out onto your catchment tool. So let's try one and we'll see how it goes. Push, left, turn upwards and then you can kind of scoop. You get a little bit. You can see it on the end there. Let's try another one. Now that one popped real nice. So you see the pitch there? We caught a little bit there. 
Now you go to the next one. Push, and you heard that one snap. That's what they usually will do when you get a good one. You can come back and kind of scoop it off. Let's see if we can get a good snap out of this one. Oh, that one sprayed. So you see how it's starting to collect up? Let's move the camera up here and try this one. There we go. Quite a bit off that one. You can just leave that bark in there. It's not going to hurt a thing. Probably actually help it burn. Another little one. So basically you're popping them. Pushing in against the blisters and getting the resin as it comes out. You can see it there in the camera, I'm sure. Just looks like a few more down here. Let's move the camera. Hopefully this is in the shot. Yeah, oh yeah, there's lots there. There's another one. You can see it's starting to collect. A few more down here. All right, so I'm gonna go collect some more off a couple other trees and uh, I'll show you how to light it up. So hopefully you can see that, guys. Uh, I only went around for about another minute or so and collected that. The whole end of the stick is, is covered in it. It's dripping even now at this point. So, but that's what's nice about having that little bowl on the end. It can help you uh, hold more of it. So let's go light this up and show you how it works. Get, get back, Kupak. Okay guys, so I've cleared back a little spot just to set this so that you guys can see it. Now it shouldn't take too many strikes of a ferro rod, flint and steel, even if all you got left is the sparker on your lighter and no gas. If you've prepared a little bird's nest ahead of time, uh, dead branches, uh, things from pencil lead size up to uh, pencil size maximum, a little bird's nest, even grass or cedar bark or birch bark, whatever you can get your hands on to make yourself a good little tinder bundle. Now you've got this pitch collected. Let's see how easily and quickly it lights. That one almost caught. There it is. It's all about your aim, really. And look how well that burns. And that's that little bit of pitch we collected. Now you can imagine if you've got that inside of a a well-prepared bird's nest of dead branches and dry grass or cedar bark or birch bark. Look at it go. And, you know, that little bit you saw me collecting plus maybe 60 seconds afterwards. It took me less than two minutes to collect that. And look at the little blaze. I'd like to thank uh, Wayne Russell from Cull Craven Bushcraft for teaching me this trick. This is awesome. Well, that's how you do it, guys. Catch up with you in just a sec. Isn't that cool, Kupek? Fire. How come you don't make the fire, huh? Still burning. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging around and watching me uh, show you guys how to use the fir tree for a natural fire starter. I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, Outdoor Adventure Craft is on Facebook now. We have a page over there. And uh, that's how I'm going to be uh, breaking out the 250 subscriber uh, giveaway. Uh, I'll have you guys comment here uh, on the Facebook page, but I'll have you uh, like and share uh, from the uh, Outdoor Adventure Craft Facebook page. So you might want to go over and check that out, guys. It's coming up pretty soon. Uh, this morning I looked and it was 226 subscribers, so we're not very far off from 250, so I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, again, I'm really happy that you guys are enjoying the videos and uh, hopefully you're learning a little something. I'm far from an expert but uh, I really do enjoy the woods and I enjoy the skills and I'm happy to pass on what little I know and hopefully you can put that together with some of the other 
stuff you're getting elsewhere, uh, reading, uh, videos, and don't forget dirt time. You really need to go out and practice this stuff. Uh, it's fine to sit home and, and talk about it or type about it, you know, on the groups and forums and stuff like that, but you really need to be out here and, and practice these things so that when you need them, if you need them, they're going to work for you. So don't forget to like uh, and subscribe here on uh, YouTube. Go on over to Facebook, check out the new page, Outdoor Adventure Craft, and uh, look forward to the 250 subscriber giveaway. And thanks for joining me here, guys, and we'll see you next time. Kupak, come, come, that's a good boy, that's a good boy, boys you're getting big.